At six foot, six and a half inches tall, Tommy Toon is a true giant of the American theater. Not bad for someone who left Texas with one dream, to dance in the chorus of a Broadway show. He achieved and surpassed that goal, becoming one of the most versatile and energetic artists of the 20th century. He was a natural. Dancing was in his blood. Born in Wichita Falls, Texas in 1939, his mother Eva was a flapper with a vivacious personality. His father Jim was a whistling farm boy who had made his way in the oil fields of Oklahoma and Texas. Jim and Eva had three children, one every 10 years. Tommy is the middle child with two sisters, Nell and Gracie. They all admired their parents who beautifully danced together across ballroom floors. At the Emma May Horn School of Dance, Tommy attended a class with all boys. He was so skinny, his mother sewed little pillows inside his dance clothes so the tumbling wouldn't bruise his bones. At his first recital, Tommy gave a little boy in front of him a gentle nudge to get him going, to his mother's approval. Honey, he was slowing up the works. Everybody clapped for you because you took up the slack. As a high school graduation present, his parents sent him on a trip to New York City. Overjoyed, he called his tap dancing teacher and asked, how do I get to Broadway from here? She told him, go out the front door of the Algonquin Hotel, turn right, keep walking, and you'll get to Broadway. But with his abundant talent and distinctive style, the route Tommy took wasn't even that tricky. While attending the University of Houston, he became friends with Philip Osterman, who would later become a successful producer and director. After their graduation, Philip convinced Tommy to move to New York, and upon their arrival told him, see that newsstand? Buy yourself a copy of Backstage and a copy of Show Business and see what's auditioning. So on his first day in the big city, Tommy went to the two o'clock audition for Irma LaDuce, got the job, and joined the tour. A year later, he made his Broadway debut as a dancer in Baker Street, sharing his dressing room with another young dancer, Christopher Walken. In 1966, during auditions for an ill-fated Julie Stein show, Tommy had a chance encounter with choreographer Michael Bennett. It was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. They worked together on A Joyful Noise, Michael's first choreographic assignment in which Tommy danced in the chorus. Next, they collaborated on How Now, Dow Jones, where Tommy's featured number attracted the attention of a Hollywood casting director. Like many theater actors, he was seduced by the call of Hollywood. He won the coveted role of Ambrose Kemper in Hello, Dolly, starring Barbara Streisand and directed by Gene Kelly. He was a regular on Dean Martin Presents the Gold Diggers, and he co-starred with Twiggy in Ken Russell's film, The Boyfriend. But it was Seesaw, in collaboration with Michael Bennett, that put him on the map with the show-stopping, balloon-filled 11 o'clock number, It's Not Where You Start. Audiences and critics sang the praises of this extraordinary song and dance man. He earned his first Tony Award, playing one of the first openly gay characters in a musical. Yet when it came to attending the award ceremony, Bennett warned him to take a girl as his date. Even during the social revolution of the 70s, certain cultural taboos remained off limits. But Tommy could not do that to his partner of many years, Michael Stewart. After the tour of Seesaw, he returned to New York, unemployed. With no job prospects, salvation came when Tommy's seesaw colleague, scenic designer Robin Wagner, called him with an unusual idea. That Tommy, direct. Robin knew Tommy had the style, vision, and insight for his new show, The Club, set in a Bostonian gentleman's club in 1907, where all the men were played by women. And thus a new chapter began with Tommy choreographing and staging edgy, wildly unique musicals. The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, a breakout Broadway hit, earning him the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Director of a Musical, and the imaginative A Day in Hollywood, A Night in the Ukraine, for which he won his second Tony Award. 
The next year, he directed the quintessential production of Carol Churchill's Cloud Nine and was awarded the 1982 Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Director of a Play. As a director of musicals, Tommy learned that the script always comes first, regardless of how seductive the music may be. Such was the case with Nine, his stylized musical version of Fellini's Eight and a Half. He felt he'd initially created a show of diversions because the script lacked a plot. Doggedly, he set about to make the story a celebration of every woman in the life of its anti-hero, film director Guido Contini, and in fact, of all women. His collaborators thought he was nuts, but his instincts were correct. Nine received five Tony Awards that year, and Tommy won his third Tony for Best Director. As star, director, and co-choreographer of My One and Only, in 1983, Tommy scored a personal triumph. This reworking of the Gershwin musical Funny Face reunited him with old friend Twiggy and earned him a Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical and one for Best Choreography. One night during the tour, right there, Orchestra Center was none other than the original star of Funny Face, Fred Astaire. When Mr. Astaire came backstage, his first words were, you're a tall son of a bitch. Luckily, he also loved the show. His creative genius was inexhaustible. Grand Hotel received 12 Drama Desk Awards and 12 Tony Award nominations, two of which were for Tommy for Best Choreography and Best Director. He co-starred with Anne Reinking in a tour of Bye Bye Birdie, he staged and choreographed the Will Rogers Follies, earning him his eighth and ninth Tony Awards. And he was also inducted into the Theater Hall of Fame, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, was awarded the National Medal of Arts, the country's highest honor for artistic achievement. Later, he was inducted into the National Museum of Dance, Hall of Fame, and he was recently named a living landmark by New York Landmarks Conservancy. But as anyone who works in the theater knows all too well, the road to success is paved with hits and misses. In 1994, Tommy had his first Broadway flop with the sequel, The Best Little Whorehouse Goes Public. Tommy's dear friend, the legendary Carol Channing, whom he came to consider his theatrical godmother, called it the musical of the future, and Broadway just wasn't ready for it. In 1995, after a lengthy road tryout of his Broadway-bound musical, Busker Alley, with only one week to go before the New York engagement, Tommy slipped on stage and broke his right foot, doing a step he had done at least a thousand times. Tommy's friend, the great Gwen Verdon, once said, dancers die two deaths, one when they stop dancing and two when they stop living. So Tommy considered this as his time to take a break, literally. During his recovery, he recorded his first solo album, Slow Dancing, and penned his memoirs, Footnotes. Ever the ardent hoofer, he got back to business. In 1998, in Two for the Show, he teamed again with his old dance partner, Sandy Duncan, with whom 40 years earlier, 19-year-old Tommy danced with 12-year-old Sandy in a production of The King and I. Always considering himself fortunate to have been encouraged by great teachers, Tommy lent his name in 2002 to Houston's Tommy Toon Awards, one of the country's largest celebrations of high school musical theater. As a director, he too was always a teacher. On the first day of rehearsal for Cloud Nine, Tommy shared with his cast his thoughts about the work they were to begin. There is this feeling, desire, need, longing within each of us, he said, to share ourselves with another human being. They can be of the same sex, different sex, older, younger, same color, different color, doesn't matter. And unless we cut out our hearts, there is no way to stop this feeling. And Tommy Toon has shared his gifts with us for more than 50 years. Except for one week spent working as a concept coder for Young and Rubicam, 
he has supported himself in his chosen profession since that first New York audition in 1964. He's danced in the chorus, he's danced in front of the chorus, he's choreographed and directed, he's toured all over the world. And as he sang in that magical song from Seesaw. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. It's not how you go, it's how you land. A hundred to one shot, you call him a klutz. Can outrun the favorite, all he needs is the guts. Your final return will not diminish. Will not diminish. And you can be the cream of the crop. 